Hello and welcome guys, this is the next part of the C-Sharp tutorial for beginners and in this one I will talk about for loops. In the example project we have a list of users, so these are instances of the class user and what I will do in this part is to iterate over this list by using a for loop. In the last part I already introduced a for each loop, but now I will explain this in detail, but before we come to the for each loop I will explain what a for loop is. So we'll remove this block and we start from the scratch. So let's have a look at the C-sharp reference to see what a for statement is. A for statement executes a statement or a block of statements, while a specified boolean expression evaluates to true. This means you start with a for statement, then comes the initializer, the condition and an iterator, and inside of the for loop there is your code that is executed for each iteration. You can also break out of the loop by using the break statement, but in my opinion it's not a good style, the condition of the for statement should define the number of iterations. Ok, so let's create an example. You start with the for statement, then you initialize a variable to zero, this is the initializer, after that comes the condition, and as long as this condition is evaluated to true, in this case if the variable i is lower than the number of users, the for loop will be executed. The last part is the iterator and here just increment the variable i by 1. Ok, again we have an index that is initialized to 0 and as long as this index is lower than the user count, the loop will be executed and for each iteration the index is incremented. Ok, that's the definition of the for loop, now what can we do inside of this? If we want to iterate the users with this for loop, we can use the index variable to retrieve a user from the list at this particular index. To do this you write users which is the list, then you use square brackets with the index inside to get the user from the list at this index. Then I assign this user to a new variable and if I like I can use now the login manager and call the login method with this user as parameter. Ok, somebody mentioned he wants to see some outputs on the console so that we can see what is going on, and for this you can use the console class, but to be able to use it we have to import a namespace, and this is called system. I used the show potential fixes of Visual Studio to add the namespace, and here you can see it in the using statements. Then I will use the method writeLine of the console class to print out for each iteration of the for loop which user currently logged in. Ok, but when I start now the problem is that the console will be closed, because the program isn't halted anywhere, it just ends, so we have to prevent the program from being closed. This can be done for example by using console read line, so that the user has to enter a text on the console, and then the program is halted and we can see the output. And here it is, three users are logged in. To test if the login method was successful, we could use an if statement, but this will be the topic of the next tutorial. What I also want to show you is how to step through this code with the debugger. To do this you can set a breakpoint by pressing the F9 key at the line where you want the debugger to stop. Alternatively, you can click in this lighter area on the left to set or remove a breakpoint. To start with the debugger you go to the menu debug, and then you select start debugging or just press the F5 key. Now to go step by step through the executing code, you can click this icon or just press the F10 key. Then you can see how this code is executed and the values of the variables for each iteration of the for loop. Here we are in the second iteration and the user we get here is test user 2. This is just a simple example, for using the debugger in Visual Studio, I will add a special tutorial for this. This is the last iteration of the for loop, the value for the index is 2 and the user is test user 3. Ok, this was the default for loop with the for statement, but to iterate over a list of items, a more comfortable way is to use the for each loop. 
So let me comment this out. By the way, this can be done by selecting this block and then pressing Ctrl K and C. And then we add a for each statement. So you have to write for each round brackets to get a user from the list of users. So you don't have to define an index here, you just get the next user in the list for each iteration of the for each loop. Then we can copy this code to log in the user and paste it as body into the for each statement. And that's all, we can start again. I remove the breakpoint so that the program isn't halted and we get the same result as before. Ok, great, but why and when does this work? Or better to say, for which data types? We have a list now of users, but what is a list? Let's have again a look at the C-sharp reference, here for the for each statement. It says that for each can be used for any types that implement the iEnumerable interface or for any type that satisfies the following conditions. It has the public parameterless getEnumerator method and this method has the public current property and the public method moveNext. I will go more into detail for this when we talk about interfaces. For now we just have to know that the list class that we use is of type iEnumerable and this type has an enumerator which has the property current and the moveNext method implemented so we can use it in a for each statement. And that's it for the tutorial about for loops. The next one will be about conditions, so we'll explain the switch and the if statement. I hope this C-sharp series is interesting for you and if it is then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified when the next part is online. If you would like to support me, think about being my patron, this would really help this channel grow. Thanks for this, thanks for watching and I'll see you on JNM.